Recently, I found this old portable CRT TV in my basement. By simply plugging in a DC connector, applying 12V DC and turning the power slash volume adjustment wheel, the TV slowly turns on and draws around 1.2 amps. Now I could either utilize the built-in antenna and the frequency adjustment wheel to search for broadcasting channels that, like I expected, don't exist anymore nowadays. Or I could switch to the monitor modes, connect a composite video signal from a classical video game console and enjoy one of the best platformer games. But since the picture of my TV is already distorted and honestly not a pleasure to look at, let's delay the gaming fun for now and instead I will show you in this episode of Facts how we can utilize the properties of such a CRT TV in order to create a very crude oscilloscope that is not only interesting to look at, but also in one way or another partly functional. Let's get started. After removing 4 visible screws, it was pretty easy to lift off the bigger parts of the housing. On the inside, we can see not only a ton of interesting vintage electronics, but also the main flyback transformer, which connects to the back and the front of the cathode ray tube, whose abbreviation is CRT, as in CRT TV. The flyback transformer provides a high voltage to accelerate the electrons generated by the electron gun to form an electron beam which hits the phosphorescent screen and thus creates a light spot. But since we don't want a static point, because an oscilloscope is usually used to examine constantly changing signals, we need to utilize the two deflection coils of the system. If we look at it from the front, we see one continuous coil on the top and bottom and another one left and right from the tube. By applying a voltage to such a coil, current will flow, which creates a magnetic field that will deflect the electron beam. So in conclusion, the top and bottom coil is the vertical deflection coil that will move the electron beam in the y direction and the left and right coil is the horizontal deflection coil which will move the electrons in the x direction. But which coil is which, you might ask? Well, to find that out, I firstly connected my differential probes to the blue and red wire coil. After turning on the TV, we can see a black picture, since there's no input video signal, and the oscilloscope presents us an AC square wave with peak voltages of 30 to 40 volts and a frequency of around 15.6 kHz. Since that is clearly not the 50Hz refresh rate of the TV, I connected my probes to the yellow and grey wire coil instead, turned on the TV and saw the anticipated close enough to 50Hz AC ramp function with peak voltages of around 7 volts. As stupid as I am, I initially thought that this 50Hz ramp function deflects the electron beam horizontally. So I followed the coil wires from the terminal, tried to remove the connector, gave up and simply cut through the red and blue wires of the 15 kHz coil. But surprise, after turning on the TV, we can only see a vertical line, meaning that my assumption was wrong. It is actually the other way around. But since I already screwed up this part, I simply got my function generator, set it to a 50 Hz sine wave with a peak to peak voltage of half a volt and connected it to the horizontal deflection coil which caused a rather unimpressive deflection of the electrons. The reason for this is that the voltage of the function generator collapsed after connecting it to the coil. Since the function generator has an impedance of 50 ohm and the coil with its resistance of 0 0.6 ohm and an inductance of 0 0.21 millihenry, an impedance of around 0 0.6 ohm. That means most of the voltage will drop across the 50 ohm instead of the 0.6 ohm of the coil. To fix that, I simply utilized the Class D audio amp, which I also powered with a 12 volt power source. After connecting the sine wave to the left input channel of the amp and its output to the coil, we can see that the amplification factor was a bit too high. 
So by decreasing the output level of the function generator so that the amplified signal has a peak to peak voltage of 6 volts, we can utilize the full horizontal range of the TV and we can have a bit of fun with different signals. But since this would still be an upside down oscilloscope, I reconnected the red and blue wire and separated the grey and yellow one instead, which finally led to the desired horizontal line. By hooking up the amplified sine wave to the vertical deflection coil, we can kind of see the signal on the screen. But because the resistance and inductance of this coil is bigger than the previous one, we need to increase the peak to peak voltage up to 13 volts, in order to utilize the complete vertical range of the TV. Now the signal is still not easily recognizable, because the horizontal deflection still has a frequency of 15.6 kHz, and increasing the frequency of our sine wave is also not the best idea because the Y range decreases due to the increasing impedance of the coil. So in order to achieve any kind of acceptable results, I separated the red and blue wire once again, which should now only create a light spot on the TV screen, and used an Arduino Nano in combination with a PCF8591 8-bit DAC and a bit of code to create a RAM function with a frequency of roughly 50 Hz. I connected the signal to a potentiometer as a voltage divider, which then passes it to the right input channel of the amp to create an adjustable AC RAM function at the right output channel. This amplified signal then connects to the horizontal deflection coil and can be fine adjusted with the potentiometer to stretch the electron beam across the whole X area of the screen. At this point we can finally reconnect the sine wave of the function generator to the left channel of the amp and the output of it to the vertical deflection coil. As you can see with this setup we can definitely examine the voltage signal of my function generator and possibly some other simple waveforms. So as a finishing touch for my crude oscilloscope I connected the sine wave to an analog input of the Arduino and use the analog read function to trigger the ramp waveform at a certain point of the sine wave. That means that by fine tuning the offset of the signal, we can lock it in place and investigate it even better. But needless to say, this is still just a crude attempt to convert a CRT TV into an oscilloscope. There is still plenty of features missing from a proper oscilloscope. And with that being said, I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome, stay creative and I will see you next time.